What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey and in today's video we're going to be talking about connecting our uh, node server to our Postgres instance. Now before we get into all of that guys, I do want to say a few things. First of all, I am going to be my I am going to be using my boilerplate, my server boilerplate. You can find that in my GitHub. I'm going to leave a description down below as well, a link in my description down below. And guys, this is just the way I like to set up my server. It's nothing special. It's just the way I like to set up my server. Uh, so if you have your own way of setting up your server, by all means, go ahead and use that. I'm just I'm just letting you know there is going to be some code, and not, I'm not going to be explaining it. The reason why I'm not going to be explaining it is because I do have a video of like how I set up my my server. So if you are interested in using my boilerplate for my server, here's a video that explains that. I'm not going to be telling you what's happening with all that stuff in my server. Okay, or the way the things that, the things that I do. Okay, and I will have a link uh, of the video as well in the description down below. Another thing, guys, is that I do have a mini series databases for Node.js, and this basically tells you how to use or when and how to use a specific database for certain situations. In this case, in this mini series, um, I already had I already built a uh, e-commerce a mini e-commerce site, and I was just letting you guys. Uh, know when and where you would want to use a database for that e-commerce site. All the code and all the explanation in this, is in this video, so go check that out if you're really interested. And one last thing, I did create a Docker series, obviously, so we are going to be using Docker to spin up a Postgres instance. Again, this is not if you don't ha you don't need to use Docker. Honestly, some people don't even have Docker, right? Because I think it's what for Windows 10. I'm not sure if they changed that, but for Windows 10, you have to have uh, I forget the addition that you have to have, man. It sucks. The thing is, not that not not everybody's gonna have Docker. So, if you don't have Docker, you could obviously install Postgres right into your local machine. Just notice that the only difference between that or Docker and that is that you're gonna be spinning up a locally or Postgres locally on your machine, and we're gonna be spinning up a instance with using Docker. But everything else is just the same. Just get a Postgres instance running on your machine. That's all you need to do. Okay. And guys, if you do hear a uh, noise in the background, that's that's uh music. <laughs> My wife listening to music, so sorry about that. So anyways, let's get right into the video. Just wanted you, wanted to clear up some stuff. All right, let's get it right into the video. So the first thing we're going to be doing is running a Postgres instance with using our Docker. So if you go to Docker Hub, type in Postgres, they have some uh, explanations on like how to set it up and what is Postgres, right? So what I'm gonna do is just copy this and go to our, you know, right here, our uh, terminal or CMD, whatever you want to call it, man, command prompt. And we're going to be making some changes right here. So first of all, my container name is going to be Postgres dash dev. And the password Postgres password is going to be admin for me in a way. So admin. And then uh, I am going to want to map my ports. So I'm mapping my local machines 5432 to the default port of Postgres, which is you guessed it 5432. And one last thing, I am going to add in RM. So that way, once we close out of this connection, it's going to delete my container. I, I honestly don't want this container to run on my computer if I'm not using it. So once we get out of it, it's going to delete it, which is good for me anyways. So if you hit enter, uh, oh, the dollar sign <laughs> home, delete that. All right. If you hit enter, there you go. You should have a Docker or a instance of Postgres. There you go. I have my con container ID and my name of this container is Postgres dash dev. All right, now it's time to set up our uh, server and we're going to be just following this just for a bit, you know, um, so installing, we're going to be installing SQLize and also PG, PGH store for Postgres. But guys, you can use whatever uh, database you want to. It does not really matter because it's going to be mostly all the same. So you could use whatever you want, but in this case, we are going to be using Postgres. So we're going to be, uh, in, um, saving PG and PG H store modules as, as well as SQLize. Okay. So let's go to our app. Uh, where is it at right here? All right. So like I said, this is my, my, uh, server. So anyways, over here, NPM, I PG PG H store. Um, and SQLize. Hit enter. Just wait a bit. 
All right, there we go. And we are going to be adding some options. So going into the config, into the index.js, into our development, because this is where we're going to be uh, doing most of our stuff right now in development. What we, what we want to do is add a property called right here called Postgres. And we're going to add another property called options because this is where we're going to put all of our options. All of our options is being what host is it going to be? So our host is going to be local host. Obviously, if you're running this in a server, you're actually running a Postgres in a server somewhere. You want to type in that actual URL right there. Next up is the port. What port are we using? 5432. Um, database. What's the name of our database that we're going to be using? And uh, I'm going to give it a name of dev. I don't know. I'm just going to give it a name of dev. Um, the dialect. Di dialect. What dialect are we using? And we're using the Postgres dialect. Uh, another one is two more two more guys i know this. i know this is a lot so user name is going to be by default is literally postgres and don't worry guys we are going to be talking about how to add another user and also how to change or add a password to that user but for right now we're not going to be doing that it's just username and postgres maybe at the end of the video i'm not too sure i'm not too sure about that right now but for right now username default is postgres and the password is the password that you uh, gave it. So in this case, in our right here, our password was admin. If you're doing it locally, setting up Postgres locally, your password is going to be the password that you set up. Uh, you, you, you should have been prompted to enter a password. Next up, I'm going to add after the options, out of options, I'm going to add a client uh, property and we're gonna give it null. Right now, obviously, we do not have a property, I mean, a client, because we haven't even tried to even log in or um, what's it called, connect to our database yet. So we don't have a client right now. So it's going to be null, but we are going to be getting a client right now. So control save this, and there we go. Now we have all of our options. Now, uh, before we move on, there is one more option that we can do. It's totally optional, but since we are doing it, it's this logging option, right? And since we are, since we're using a bunion, our custom logger for this, we could actually bind that with SQLize. So basically, once SQLize is logging stuff, it's basically logging out the, there it is right there. SQLize will log to console every SQL query it performs. So if we try to grab something for the database, it's going to give you the actual SQL query that was performed to get everything from the database, right? So it's going to say select everything star from uh, the database dev, right? So it gives you everything. It's going to log that out. Since it, it is going to be doing that, obviously you could set this to false, but I kind of like seeing those logs come out so that way you can learn a little bit more what's happening uh, if you're trying to learn more of a syntax way. So what I'm going to do is literally just grab this. Like I said, you don't have to do it, but this is just an extra step. I don't think that many people do it anyways. But since there are people that prefer uh, doing this, I am going to be setting this logging right there. And we are going to grab a message from a SQLize and we're basically just creating another logger. So right here, what I'm gonna do is get our logger, the one we just created, and it's going to be dot info and passing in that MSG, that message that we're getting from SQLize. And that's it, that's all you have to do, okay? So control save this. All right, now let's try to connect to our uh, database. So over here, since we did install SQLize, this is where we're going to require it. So SQLize, I always get confused. Is that how you spell SQLize? It's going to equal require SQLize. There it is. Yeah. So uh, there you go. Next up, right under app, I am going to be creating a function, a async function. Uh, function. We're going to call it uh, connect to post Gress. And basically what this is going to be doing, this function is literally going to be just making sure we actually do uh, connect to our database. We authenticate, right? This is just testing the connection. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to test our connection before we set up our client, before we start, you know, using SQLite. We want to test it out, right? So in here, what I'm going to do is make a uh, variable called SQLize. SQLize, and we're going to set this equal to a new instance of SQLize 
passing in those options that we created. So that's in my inside my config dot uh, post grass dot options. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to do the try catch block. There we go. Sequelize. There you go. Sequelize. And if it does go well, what I'm gonna do is use my bunion logger. So log dot info. Uh, connection has been established. If there's an error, what I want to do is log dot error, you know, unable to connect to the database and give out the error. Last step is that once this does authenticate, meaning that it does uh, pass the testing phase, what we want to do is return SQLize because we're going to be saving the SQLize to our client. This is going to be our client. Okay. Now remember in our index, we created this client null. So what I want to do right here, right under this is we're going to make that config dot post grass dot client. We're going to set this equal to uh, connect right here, connect to Postgres. And just to make it easier for you guys, uh, so that way you understand what's going on, what I'm going to do is make a const right here. I'm going to just say uh, Postgres client. It's going to equal to this. And then down here, like I said, I could have done this in one line, but just to make it easier for you guys, I'm going to just say a hey, config.postgres.client is going to equal to Postgres client, which is just this right here. Now, control save this and let's try this out. Let's uh, npm start. And you're going to see that we get an error. Okay. Now, this is not, I, I expected this already. With, with, SQL databases or with SQLize at least, you have to have your database pre uh, created. You already have to have it created before you could even do anything with it. So right here is saying that, hey, we cannot find that database dev. It does not exist. So therefore, uh, authentication failed, right? So yeah, you didn't have to worry about this with MongoDB, nor did, did you have to worry about this with Redis, but with MySQL or with Postgres, you do have to have that database created. So let's go ahead and create that database. And by the way, guys, uh, there's one more thing for databases. I'm going to be using the GUI interface. This is just going to help you understand, or at least look at it visually what's going on. Okay. Yes, we can do just, uh, SQL syntax and just, you know, write up, create DB, whatever DB you want to create. But the thing is, I want you guys to actually visualize, to see what's going on. Okay. So this will be in the link down below and just download it and then just go on from there. I already have it downloaded. Let me move this out of the way. It's my coffee, uh, but let me move that out of the way. And then, oh, by the way, um, if you do want to support me, buy me some coffee link down in below, please. I'll be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Anyways, I already have this downloaded, so I'm going to open it up. Okay. I'm opening it up. This is just a one, two, it gives, it opens up your browser. And we're going to be creating a server. So right here, this is a group, a group of servers, right? This is just literally a group. So inside of that, you could literally create it outside if you want to, but I'm going to create it inside of here. I'm going to create a server. Okay. Now in the servers, you do have to give it a name. So this name is going, I'm going to just say local uh, dash dev, because I want to make sure that this is, uh, I know that this server is our local dev server. So. Moving on to the connection tab right here. What we need to do is say where, what the host is it, which honestly it, it's our local host. Now this is, this is the same if you're running a uh, Postgres locally on your machine. Now for Docker, it might be a little different depending on how you did it. Now, if you're following along and you did it the way I did it, local host is your answer. But let's say that you did not, uh, what's it called? You do not do this port mapping, right? You do not do this. This, this is a case where you're going to need to find out what the IP address of the container is. And there's a simple code that you could do. Uh, I will have this in the description down below. And this is the code and all you have to type in is the, the name of the container. So my name of the container is post dash dash dev. And then this is the IP address of this container right here, the one that we're running. And this is what I would be putting over here. If I did not, if it, I did not put that uh, port mapping, but since we did port mapping dash P, uh, we're good. We just need to type in localhost. 
Next up is our port 5432. Yes, maintenance da database Postgres. Yes, leave that alone for right now. Username default, like I said, is Postgres. Our password is admin. And then that's it. Let's save it. And this should work. As you can see, it does work right here. And as you can see, we, we have a Postgres uh, database. Um, but in our application, where's our application? We're, we're trying to get a dev database. So we need to create a dev database. So right inside of database, right click and create database. Call this dev. Save it. Okay. Wait, what did it say? Oh, it already exists. There you go. Never mind. And then, uh, yes, yes. Uh, let's try to refresh this. I don't see it. So I'm going to refresh it. There it is right here. It's on, as you can saw, it's on. It was next. So X means that it's not up and ready yet, but now it's ready. So now that we have our dev database, let's go back to our application. And um, what was that? No. And uh, restart this. So RS, hit enter. And you shouldn't have any, yeah, you shouldn't have any um, errors. And we don't. We have exactly what we need, right? We have a, we're listing at port 3000, which comes from right here and then we have connection has been established successfully which is up here this is our sqlize client and there you go now we have a fully functional uh server connecting to our database and we can start doing whatever we want with it right we can start creating models and all that stuff um we are going to get into some properties here like things that you could do with here inside of pg admin but we're not going to get super heavy on the pg admin because this is not a pg admin series honestly this is a different series on its own you could do so much things with this stuff and it's super super cool but this is a postgres and sqlize uh series so that's what we're going to stick to so that's it for this video guys we created our dev database we've connected to it with sqlize and we've also connected uh to our postgres um database with pg admin as well so that way we can see what's going on right a visual rep rep representation representation oh my god <laughs> anyways so that's it guys thank you thank you so much for watching my video i hope you learned something today this is just the beginning of the series guys next next up we're going to be starting we're going to start to create models and all that stuff so stick around for that guys i, I hope you do and i will see you in the next video thanks bye